Hi everyone, this is uh, Drew Redepenning from Courage Kenny Rehab Institute. Today we're just going to talk about the Quad Stick Manager program. This is the program that you would download new gamer profiles on the Quad Stick or just change some of the settings on the Quad Stick itself. So, this is the Quad Stick Manager program right here. Um, to download it, you would go to the Quad Stick website here. You would uh, click on Downloads. And if in downloads you just scroll down, it's this QMP V 3.09, and you'd install it, and it would load up here uh, onto your desktop. So it it shows up as this icon here on your desktop. It says Quad Stick. So in the Quad Stick Manager program here, um, this is the main page. So this is going to show all the profiles that are available on the Quad Stick. So here to the left, those are the ones that are, are currently downloaded onto the quad stick. Um, as you can see here, it's in numbered order, so those are actually the order it will switch through when you um, when you do that long sip on the side of the quad stick and switch to your profiles, it'll go in this order. So default will always be the first one, so when you plug your quad stick into anything and it boots up, it'll always boot up in profile one. So anything that's with one that's called default will always be the first one that it boots up as. After that, it'll just go in alphabetical order um, down the list. Um, right here in the middle, these are the Quad Stick factory profiles. Um, so these are the ones that are just already available that you can just um, download right to your Quad Stick. They're not ones. Uh, they're not cu like custom profiles um, that you have to. Uh, mess around with at all. They're just ones that are just already available that somebody already made. Um, if you want to make your own, we're going to go over a video later on how to customize your own user profile for different games. Um, uh, so I would encourage you to watch that video later if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, and here over here is just shows the different custom profiles that I've already made um, for the quad stick. So. So these are the ones that are I, I custom made here. Um, they can also be downloaded to the quad stick. Uh, so let's just go over, if I want to, let's say, remove this Battlefront profile from my quad stick. I would just highlight it here, just do a single click, and I'd click Remove from quad stick. And ask if I want to delete it, I say yes. And here it's gone, and I'm always going to give my quad stick about a minute. Um, to, to process this removal. So I'll give it a couple seconds here. Okay, so now it's removed from my quad stick. Now let's say I want to add that file back onto my quad stick. So I'm going to go over here, since it's under my custom profiles, I'm going to go here to my to Battlefront. I'm going to click on it, highlight it. I'm going to click Download to Quad Stick. I'll give it some time here. And now it's downloaded up to my quad stick. Hi everyone, this is Drew from Courage Kenny Rehab Institute. Uh, we're back in the quad stick manager program. Uh, today we're just going to go over how to create a custom profile with the quad stick. We're not going to go through the steps um, of like for a specific game to create one. Just the steps you would go through um, to uh, initiate. Uh, creating a custom gamer profile. So typically what I do for custom gamer profiles is I um, I open, you can open pretty much any of these quad stick factory profiles. I usually find whatever game is similar to the one I'm trying to customize. So if it's, let's say it's similar to Destiny. So I'm going to double click on Destiny and that will open this window here. So this is the um, this is the Destiny um, factory profile. So this is the one um, that somebody already made in the quad stick, one of these middle profiles um, that are already available to use. So let's say I'm, I'm either doing a different game or let's say I don't I don't specifically like everything that's going on in this destiny profile and I'll make some changes because um, um, my preferences are slightly different. Um, so here um, I actually can't make any changes to this specific um, spreadsheet because this is in view only since if I were to make changes to this one everyone who accessed these factory profiles would get changes to all their 
um, factory profiles, um, which wouldn't be good because you wouldn't want, just because my preferences are um, wanting to change as somebody else might not want want to change and they kind of like that, that factory profile. So these factory profiles actually you cannot at all edit. So what I actually have to do here is make a copy of it. So I'm going to go to file here in this factory profile. I'm going to make a copy. Um, and I'm going to name it whatever I want. So we'll say test. We'll say okay. And we can, uh, we'll X out of the, this is the factory one, so we'll just exit out of that one. So now we'll wait for it to open up here. So this is just a copy of the other destiny profile. So as you can see here, it's got our new name, test, up here. Um, I also want to change this. So in the first um, page of the spreadsheet, down here it has the profile CSV name. So I actually want to change that as well to something else, something unique. Um, otherwise it will override um, if I have another um, profile name Destin with destiny.csv, it will actually override that one. So I actually want to change this name as well. Um, so let's say, well, we'll just say I went through and I made some made some changes. Let's do a random one here. Um, so I made a change, uh, and I and I like the changes I made. And I want to try this one now on my quad stick. So if I want to upload this one to my quad stick now, what I want to do is I want to go to add-ons. I'm going to go down, and I, I should have this quad stick um, tab here to click on. If you don't, then you go to ma um, get add-ons, and then you would type in quad stick, and then you would get the quad stick add-on. Um, but here, since I have it, I would go to quad stick. I would go down over here to download to quad stick with QMP. Then I would go again, download with QMP. And then I would open. And this will actually download this profile one onto my user list. Um, so that's the, you'll see here this column on the right over here and the game list that's currently uploaded onto my quad stick. So down to my quad stick and my uh, QMP as well. So you can see here, um, right here, 9 test.csv, um, and test, and then down here at the bottom, test.csv and test. So it'll download them to my user custom profiles and in my quad stick. Um, one important thing to note too, so even, so let's say I made the changes and I played the game and I realized they didn't work and I want to make additional changes to this test profile. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet here and let's say this left puff didn't work and I wanted a let's try, we'll say right puff. Change it to right puff. So one important thing is even though my quad six plugged in and even though this link this this link still is linked to that Google Sheets profile um, and this is uploaded to my quad six it will not register this change unless I go and I re-upload it again. So what I actually have to do if I made another change here to my custom profiles is do that same process again, is add-ons, quad stick, download the quad stick with QMP. And redo the upload process again. So since the, both these files have the same CSV name and um, and the same name, this one will actually just replace my old test.csv file so and upload and replace that one from my quad six. So then my changes will be, um, my ch the change I just made will replace the old file. So here you'll see it still says test.csv here, except this is now the one includes the changes that I just made. Um, one mistake that um, I made initially 
and uh, other people make initially when they're th change, making changes to the quad stick is they assume since this has that link to the Google Sheets file that it automatically um, uploads those changes as they're making changes on that Sheets file, which is incorrect and they would have to go and upload, re-upload um, with that process that we just went over. Um, so that's how to download your custom files onto the quad stick. Um, in later videos we'll go over just uh, more in depth on how to create custom pro profiles for, for specific games. The other beneficial thing about just looking at the spreadsheets is just seeing what your controls are for that game. Uh, so that could be useful just for uh, just just for a refresher or if you just want to make a cheat sheet for a game, which I highly recommend is just having a cheat sheet, especially when you first start uh, playing a game, having that available for you to see uh, just so you can get used to those controls. So here I can just see, here I can have my, see my left one is left puff, left two is center sip, left three is left and center sip toggle. Um, so for this, for each um, profile, what exactly are my controls? Uh, so I, I would encourage people uh, before they upload things onto their quad stick, even if they're the factory ones, to just look through these spreadsheets to make sure they, they have a good grasp of the controls, um, and then also use them to create cheat sheets for the game. Okay, so right now we're going to go over more of the logistics of the quad stick manager program and these Google spreadsheets here. So what right now I really want to focus on is just this uh, this first column here, these output functions. So once again, these are what your quad stick is going to output to whatever you're controlling. So if it's like a PlayStation, what, what button it's going to hit on the controller. If it's a computer, what key on the keyboard it's going to hit. So here, that's what this controls. So and you can change these with these drop-down menus. So um, by default, the quad stick is actually a PlayStation controller. So to do actually a Xbox, you have to have a, an additional plugin, uh, and it also just uh, by default also works with the computer as well if you have the control set to computer commands. So um, here, so all these here, where it says D-pad, left joy left, um, left one, left two, sir squares, triangle, circle. So these are all PlayStation controls here. So as I scroll down here. Um, all the way up until touch here. Those are all PlayStation controls. So, um, if I selected any of these, these would be PlayStation controls on a PlayStation controller. And then if I scroll down more, so as I get here to mouse, so that's actually controlling a mouse, just a computer mouse. So if I switch it to here, this would actually control a mouse if I was connected to a computer or another device that accepts a mouse. If I scroll down more, these are infrared commands. So if I was controlling a TV, because there's an infrared emitter actually on the back of the quad stick, these would actually um, send an infrared command to your TV if you have the right infra infrared command set on your quad stick controller. So that would actually control your TV. Here, KB, that stands for keyboard. So a computer keyboard, so if your quad stick was plugged into a computer or any other device that accepted a keyboard input, here is how I would change what keyboard key it presses. So like a, now we have all the letters on the keyboard and then additional functions on the keyboard as well, so your F, F keys um, and like caps lock, etc. So those are your keyboard commands. So back to gaming. So, so I really want to focus on gaming because that's the most complicated part of it. Um, so for gaming, so let's say you don't want a PlayStation, you want to control an Xbox. So it actually doesn't matter too much whether or not you set these as PlayStation controls or or if you set them as like the Xbox name. So on an Xbox, if we scroll down here, X, square, triangle, and circle, those are all different on the Xbox controller. I believe it's... Um, it's an X, a B, and A, and a Y on the Xbox controller, rather than these ones on the PlayStation. So, once again, it doesn't matter too much if I say I do, say I keep this as a, as a PlayStation 
control, so I, I keep it as X, circle, square, and triangle. And I get a converter device that converts a PlayStation controller, because that's what the, the quad stick is, to an Xbox controller, because that's what you need in order to play Xbox on a device. Um, it wouldn't matter too much that I actually have this as a PlayStation control, because my converter piece actually converts those PlayStation controls to Xbox controls. So, so it doesn't actually really matter too much, as long as I know what this transfers over to an Xbox control. It doesn't matter that I have this set as a PlayStation control name. So, like, let's so circle on a PlayStation control is B on an Xbox controller. So you don't actually have to change that here because that converter piece will automatically convert that circle to the to the B control on the Xbox. Um, so, but let's say just just because one it can be really confusing to do it this way. Um, so one thing to make it a little bit easier actually is if I want to actually just change these to the Xbox control names just to not confuse myself while I'm um, setting up the controller I can actually go up here under output or function and I can click on Xbox outputs so that'll convert everything that I have on here from a PlayStation output to whatever name it is on the Xbox so here you see the letter A, B, X, and Y. So these are just, it just transferred the name from the PlayStation to the Xbox. Once again, this doesn't mean my quad stick is an Xbox controller. It's still a PlayStation controller. Um, I still need that plug-in, so you still need that converter piece to convert your PlayStation to an Xbox controller um, in order to use your, your quad stick on an Xbox. So this is just changing the name in this spreadsheet just to make it a little bit less confusing while I'm um, while I'm doing the commands uh, for an Xbox. So it's, it's a little bit easier for me to um, to, to view these. Let's say I'm, I'm doing a game for an Xbox instead of a PlayStation. A little bit easier for me to keep track of this rather than saying I wonder what this is on the Xbox. So if it was like a circle instead of a B, I would kind of have to keep track of that in my head. This way I can just see straight out what that control is on the Xbox. If I want to go back to PlayStation controls, I just click PlayStation outputs, and then I will convert everything back to PlayStation. So now everything's converted to PlayStation controls. Um, I still do, for both of them, I still do get, if I scroll down more, I still do have all the infrared and, and um, keyboard, um, so KB is for keyboard. The keyboard uh, outputs as well. Those don't get those don't get erased just because I have it set as PlayStation or Xbox. So I'm still able to do those as well. So that once again just makes it easier to see depending on which controller you're using. Um, if I just want to go to default, I just do output or function. Um, so um, talking again about the converter piece. So I talked a little bit about converting your your quad stick to an Xbox controller so you actually need a converter piece to do that so um, if you're going to the, from the quad stick to an Xbox one you're gonna need something called the Brooks converter and it's PS3 to Xbox one so if I go on here so that would be right here. So it's actually on the Quad Stick website right here. And this is the Brooks Super Converter PS3 to Xbox One. So you just plug your Quad Stick into this and it converts all those PS3 controls or PS4 controls into Xbox controls on the Xbox One. We'll go over the uh, the setup later a little bit about how you would go about um, setting up your quad stick for a PS4 or an Xbox so that'll be a separate video um, right now we're just mainly talking about just the programming of the quad stick the physical plugging it into your system we'll go over later everyone now we're going to go over some of the logistics for when you're 
um, programming new profiles in the quad stick. So right now I'm just in one of those Google spreadsheets um, that we do the, the programming for. So I open one of those profiles from the quad stick um, and I'm on, on one of the custom ones so I can edit it now. Um, so we already went over um, what the sip and puffs are, um, how to use these drop down menus to pick your command. Now we're just going to go over a little bit more in detail um, some some just general information for when you're creating profiles. Um, one thing first, so it's important to know which controls you have used um, and what you haven't used so far. So one thing that I like to bring up sometimes is to see what what controls are left on the quad stick to use. So let's say I want to know if I can use a right sip. I want to know if I already have that used for one of the controls already on the quad stick. I can go up here to um, add-ons and I go to my quad stick add-on and then I click here to list unused inputs and in a second here it'll open this little um, menu over here and it'll list all the ones I have not used yet which is kind of nice because then I can um, look at that list and if I want to add another control onto this profile I can add one of those without overlapping controls so we'll give it a second here to load up um, and while that's loading up I'll talk about some of the other um, uh, details of the quad stick um, programming with uh, in Google Spreadsheet. So one nice thing is, let's say I'm adding a, a sip and puff command here. So if I'm doing MP mouthpiece left sip, so that's indicating it's the mouthpiece, it's the left sip on the mouthpiece. So I already have this one. Um, used for one of my inputs already. So since this is already used for one of my inputs, it highlights in yellow. So when it highlights in yellow that indicates, hey, you've already you're already using this one. In some cases, yeah, let's say I want to do if I wanted to do left and right bumper at the same time, in some games if you hold down left and right bumper at the same time, that's a um that's a specific can um action in the game. So in like Call of Duty it would be like your special is left and right bumper at the same time. In that case I wouldn't really care that these ones um, I'm using this one twice because that's actually what I want. Um, but in some cases um, it just gives you a little heads up that hey you've already used this one um, and that's same with over here you see it's it's highlighting these ones in yellow as well so that's saying hey you already have right one or right bumper being used um, and it just indicated to me that it's already um, been listed prior. Um, so that's just, when it highlights in yellow, that, that doesn't mean it's an error, it's just notifying you. So I can still, even though I this is listed in yellow, I can still load this up to my quad stick no problem, cause, so this is not an error message. It's just a uh, warning. Um, the other thing too, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about what each of these are here. Um, so these are how, like we said before, how that control behaves um, on the quad stick. So like when I do a left sip on my controller and it hits the right one or right bumper, how exactly that control is going to activate it. If it activates normally, that just means when I sip in it, it'll just activate for as long as I'm sipping in it. So just like a controller, the button's only activating while I'm pressing the button. Um, and toggle here. so toggle is is like a light switch so if I sip into it once it flips on if I sip into it again it flips off so one way one reason one way I would use this in a game is like for aim so for aim in a game um, usually you would put that as toggle because you don't want to keep having to hold down aim um, because then you can't shoot so if I did like let's just say in this example right one is aim in the game um, so when I left sip in it it'll actually hold down the aim button so I don't have to keep on holding that right that right bumper down to keep my guy in aim I just have to sip and do it once and my guy will stay in aim so it'll just toggle on aim um, and I'll show you an example of that right here um, so let's switch over here and you'll see an example of that okay this is an example of toggle so Robert's just gonna hear puff right in that left puff and I see that just holds down his aim so he doesn't have to keep on puffing into that left one it's just holding down aim so then he can start shooting if he puffs into it again 
that's just going to here toggle off aim, so that just turns it off. So it's like a light switch on and off. So he puffs into it once, it turns it on, puffs it into it again, it turns it off. So the other control I use frequently is this force off right here. Um, so what force off actually does is pretty much exactly what it sounds like it does. It will force turn off your whatever control you set it as when you activate the um, the sip and puff on the quad stick. So right here, when I do left sip, it will force turn off my right bumper. Um, I know that this one, most people would think, why would you ever use that? Um, so one, one way I use this, um, usually in games, is I use it for when I'm sprinting, I force turn off aim. So in like Red Dead Redemption, you're typically not sprinting and aiming and shooting at the same time because that'd be very difficult. Um, usually when you're sprinting, you're trying to get away from a fight. Um, one problem you have though is then when you're in, when you're in aim, so when you're toggled on in aim um, and you try to sprint, your guy won't go very fast. Um, just because of how the game's set up. So what I do to get around this is when I'm activating my sprint, it'll actually force turn off aim because then my guy can go right into a sprint, go full speed without me having to go and toggle off aim again. So I won't have to do that sip and buff to turn off aim. Just by sprinting, it'll actually turn off my aim for me. Uh, and then my guy can get away quicker. So that's when I use force off. So I will show you that one here. Um, next here. So you'll you'll see see that one in action. Now we're going to go over force off. You see Robert, he's toggled on aim, and then he does the sprint, which is that right sip, and that just forces off aim. So he's no longer toggled in aim anymore. See here, it just forces off aim, so he can just go right into a sprint, and he doesn't have to keep, he doesn't have to um, go over to aim and turn it off. He just keeps sprinting, and that just turns off aim for him. The next one I sometimes use here on the sheet is this greater than. So what greater than is means is that when your controller, let's say I usually use this on the the joystick on the quad stick. So when I bring my controller greater than a certain threshold, it'll activate a control. So like greater than 99, when I when I activate my control um, greater than 99%. So when I bring that joystick um, greater than 99% on that on the on the quad stick it'll turn on a control so one thing I actually use this for is in the game FIFA um, I use this for sprint so in FIFA I actually set the left joystick as um, joystick on the quad stick so that actually moves your guy around um, but for that control I go I have all of them set as when you go greater than 99 percentile on the quad stick for that left joystick it turns on sprint so that means when I move my joystick far in any direction it'll hold down the sprint button and my guy will sprint um, so that's kinda nice because then when you just want to sprint you just move the joystick up further in any, any, any direction and your play will start to sprint um, so that's just an example, so I'll switch over to that now, and you guys can see that one in action too. So Robert here is just slowly going up on that controller, and then he's just going up and up, and when he hits this threshold here, it's going to turn on sprint, and this guy's going to start to sprint. So we're going to do that one more time here. Just going to go back. So when he moves the controller up, 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 sprint. The other one that's a good one to know about here is this delayed latch one. So this one, this one's most commonly um, used in, in in the mousing program in the quad stick. So what this one does actually is um, if you activate the control for less than a certain amount of time, so we'll say I'll do 1,000. So that's 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So when I activate the control for less than one second, it'll just activate normally. So let's say it's a mouse click. So when I sip into it for less than one second, let's say it's just the center sip, um, when I sip it for less than one second, it'll just activate normally, so it'll just click. However, when I sip into it for more than a second, or at least a second, it will latch, so it'll actually turn on to toggle. So then it'll actually hold down um, the mouse for me. So this is common for like click and drag. So when I just do a um, 
just a click on the quad stick for mousing, just a um, quick sip or quick puff, if whichever one you have it set as, it'll just click normally. But then let's say I want to click and drag something, because when you click and drag something, you have to actually hold down that mouse. Instead of me having to puff into it and keep puffing into it or keep sipping into it, I can just sip into it for one second. It'll hold it for me so I don't have to keep sipping into it. And then to release again, you would just activate that control again. So if I wanted to release the mouse, I would just do a quick quick sip or a quick puff to release it. Um, so I will show you that one in action here next for mousing. So here you see when he does just short puffs in the center right here with the mouse. So two quick puffs, see that it just clicked. Now, if he wants to do the latch, he's actually going to do the puff again, but he's going to hold the puff for one second here, and now see it latches. So it kind of changes the control. So if he does a short puff below one second, it'll actually just be the mouse click. But since it's on delayed latch, when he does a puff over one second, it'll click and hold. And then get out of the hold again, he'll just puff in again, and that'll release it from hold. Okay, and the last thing I just wanted to go over to here is just talk a little bit more about these controls here. So we already went over that MP means mouthpiece, um, so you have your different mouthpiece sip and puffs. Um, so there's one thing I wanted to point out here is that, so we talked e earlier about those like, soft sips and soft puffs on here. Um, so when we when it says soft at the end of it, that indicates that those are those those soft sips and soft puffs on the quad stick. So when you're um, activating the mouthpiece, you do it's just you breathe a little less air into that sip and puff, and that's when you hear that wispy noise and the beep. Um, so those here, if I chose like left and right sip soft, or what else you do? Um, we'll do left and center puff soft. So when I do the left and center control on the quad stick, and I just, um, and I puff into it soft, and I hear that wispy noise and the beep, that activates that left and center puff soft. So when it says soft at the end, again, that's just indicating that those are those, those softer controls, so it's below the threshold for the normal sip and puff on the quad stick. Now we're just going to go over profile switching. Um, uh, right now we're just going to show what it looks like in the Quadstick Manager program. Then I'm going to switch over to Robert and he'll show you what, what profile switching looks like on the Quadstick. So um, once again, these are the profiles that I have on the Quadstick. So these are those larger game profiles. Um, so when I do that long sip on the side tube on the Quadstick and I hear that boing noise and then I use that joystick to switch between profiles, these are the profiles I'll be switching between. And once again, it'll go in order, um, this numbered order here, um, to switch between the profiles. Um, and then once I get to the profile, I want to hit that lip, and then that'll bring me into this profile. Uh, so I will switch over to Robert now, and he'll show you what that looks like on the quad stick. Okay, so now Robert's going to demonstrate um, switching profiles. So he's going to switch to his Spider-Man profile, which is um, profile 8 on the quad stick. So he's going to do a long sip here in that side tube until he hears the boing. Um, so he's switching between his larger profiles. He's moving it over until um, the eighth LED is lit. So that's five here, and then it's three over on the left. So that's um, eight altogether. So he's going to hit the lip, and now he's inside um, that Spider-Man profile, which is profile eight. So now that Robert is actually in his Spider-Man profile, um, he's going to actually um, go right in to uh, his his controls on the quad stick for that game. Um, so I'm going to just click on the the file here and it's going to open it up for the Spider-Man profile. I'm not going to go over how this is programmed at all. I'm just going to show you guys um, how he's going to actually be able to switch between the smaller profiles within this game. So once he gets into that Spider-Man profile, there's actually um, multiple um, profiles within that larger profile. Um, and what I mean by that is, so you see as I'm switching through here, it's actually switching um, the configuration on the quad stick. So um, this is helpful just because you can't program everything in just to one profile on the quad stick. Um, they have to be, uh, it, it sometimes for some controls have to, has to be spread out um, on different um, profiles. Um, like the joystick, for example, you can't program the left joystick, right joystick, and the D-pad um, realistically into all one profile. 
uh, so you have to um, have multiple files to allow you to um, control mul those multiple um, joystick functions. So now I'm just going to show Robert, um, he's going to switch between uh, his smaller profiles on the game. So uh, when he's in that Spider-Man profile, he just does a quick sip or a quick puff into that side tube, and that'll move him through these smaller profiles. Um, so when you first switch into your profile, it's actually going to go right into the first um, smaller profile within that larger profile. So here let's go to this PS3 left profile. Um, if he wants to get to the third profile, he'll just do two sips, um, quick sips into that side tube, and that'll just increment him over to his third profile. So I'm going to switch over to Robert now, and he's going to show you what that looks like on the quad stick. You can see here the first LED is lit up again. So that's indicating within his Spider-Man profile now, he's on that first smaller profile. Um, now if he wants to switch to profile three within that within these smaller profiles, he's just gonna do a two quick sips into that side tube, and that's gonna move him to the right over to profile three. Um, so that's how you switch. That's the difference between those larger profiles and those smaller profiles. So once he gets into his larger profiles, he can then switch between these pro smaller profiles within the game. Okay, now let's say that Robert's done playing Spider-Man and he's switching over to a different game. Um, we're switching over one more time, how he's going to switch between those larger profiles. So let's go back to this Quad Stick Manager program. So right now he's in profile number 8, so if he does a long sip on the side tube on the Quad Stick, he's going to get that boing noise, and then he's going to, he can change over to one of his other profiles using the joystick and the lip. So I'm going to have him switch between his Spider-Man profile and we'll go let's say to his um, mouse profile here on the quad stick. So he's just going to do a long sip on the side tube and um, change over to the six, um, number six on the indicator LEDs and then he's going to hit the lip to switch into his mouse profile. So now um, we're going to go over um, how to, like once again, how to switch between profiles. So let's say he wants to now switch to control a mouse on a computer. So mouse is his sixth profile, so that's his larger profile. So he's actually going to want to do a long, hard sip in that side tube until he hears the boing. You can see here it says it had eight there, indicating he was on Spider-Man. So now he's moving to six, so five plus one on the left over here is six. He's going to hit the lip. So now he's within his six larger profile. Once again, this LED is lit up here, indicating he's in his first um, smaller profile within his larger mouse profile. So now Robert's in his mouse profile here, so I'll open that up for you so you can take a look. So now instead of instead of him being and controlling uh, his spider be on his Spider-Man controls and um, play on the PS4, he's actually now switching to. Um, mouse controls on the computer. So he's really completely switching up what the quad stick is doing. Uh, so here it just shows what each of his smaller profiles is on the quad stick um, for mousing. So I'm going to have him here. He's This is his, um, the first profile he'll be in right when he switches to the mouse profile because this is the first uh, spreadsheet on the user list here. Um, I'm going to have him use that side tube again and just switch between these smaller profiles. So he's going to do either um, a quick sip or puff and he's going to increment over to his second profile. So that's going to be when the second LED is lit on the quad stick. And then it'll switch to this scroll function instead of this mouse function. So I'm not going to go over what this programming is right now. I'll go over that in a different video. Um, right now we're just going over the profile switching. So he's just going to switch over from mouse, is which is what he's going to be into right when he opens up that um, large uh, mouse profile, and he's going to switch over to his smaller scroll profile within his mouse profile. Now he's going to switch to his second profile within his mouse profile. Um, so it's just a single sip, quick sip on that side tube over there, and now he's on um, his second smaller profile within his mouse profile. Um, so that's just um, briefly just going over how to switch between larger and the smaller profiles. So I hope that makes sense as far as the difference between these larger profiles on the quad stick versus those smaller profiles once you're in 
within one of those larger profiles. Um, so that's all we're going to go into for switch between profiles. Um, you'll see a lot more of it as we go in, go go into the other videos. Um, but this video just gives you a brief overview of what it means to, to switch between uh, profiles on the quad stick.